Saturday Social, brought to you by EA Sports FC with PlayStation 5. Uh, right, let's get cracking with the show. Uh, we thought we'd bring back our popular start bench yes. sell item. Uh, as we have got a Chelsea, a Liverpool, and a Man City fan, we were thinking in the office, they've all got quite good squads and a lot mm. of comparable players <laughs> that yeah. are quite difficult, which we didn't want to give our opinion on. So we thought, why don't we get the guests yeah. in? Do you want to explain the rules? Rory's not convinced when you said quite good squads there. So <laughs> we'll, come on, yeah. we'll come on to that in a little bit. But yeah, you've got your whiteboards in front of you. Mm. We're going to go through comparable positions. You've got to put a player in start, you've got to put a player in bench, and a player in sell. Smithy, yes. who are the first... First three comparable players. Pick your whiteboards yeah. up. Get yourselves ready. Get your whiteboards up. We're going to start with uh, a tricky one, I've got to say. Three centre-backs, three elite centre-backs. Thiago Silva, Virgil van Dijk and Ruben Diaz. Interestingly, we did do this with William Saliba, didn't we, when he ranked it. It was a very interesting yeah. uh, debate that, that he had on that. Uh, very tough to do. Um, but let's reveal who you're starting, who you're benching, who you're selling. I'm confident. <gasps> Oh, Rory, you're different wow. as usual. Oh, wow. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's it. They're both incorrect. I'm, I'm not different. This person. <laughs> I'm correct. I'm this so, interestingly, you've all gone Ruben Diaz. So, yeah. I, I think Ruben I think Diaz Ruben. is arguably the best defender in the league, arguably the yeah. best defender in Europe, and that obviously would extend to the world. He is sensational. And I think when we talk about Man City, we always talk about their dazzling attack, don't we? We talk about the brilliance of Grealish and Foden and Haaland and De Bruyne. But they are so miserly at the back. Like, they don't concede goals. And he is a huge reason why. So, I think he definitely starts. Then it's obviously Thiago Silva and Van Dijk's on his bike. Why? <laughs> why is it obviously Thiago oh, Silva why? and Van Dijk? Uh, because Virgil van Dijk, I don't quite understand why, but he does seem to have this cloak of protection. There's a facade around him. And anybody that ever suggests that Virgil van Dijk is penetrable or slightly vulnerable, they're immediately pounced upon as if it's sacrilege. He's a very good defender. And three years ago, he was <laughs> in that column. But he has been... He has been dodgy for a good while, sent off already this season, looking looking slightly wasteful, looking slightly out of his Harry, let him have it. You're the Liverpool elite, fan. Elite Harry is etching to get a word <laughs> yeah. in Edgeways here. Go on. It's just funny because I feel like what you've said you think is the controversial opinion. And I actually think that's kind of the mainstream opinion. Loads of people have been saying Van Dijk's dropped off. He's not as good this season. But I just genuinely don't think these people are watching him week in, week out. Yes, he had a red card the first, I think, of his Liverpool career. It's very uncharacteristic. But I do still think he is just one of the best defenders in the Premier League. And you just wouldn't sell him. I, I love Thiago Silva and I actually think he, obviously you cannot deny what he's done for Chelsea but he is 38 so he just would go in my cell column ahead of Virgil van Dijk but I have not been biased I've started Diaz so yeah, okay. yeah, I've, I've tried yeah. Diaz said that I named my son after him, so, you know, I mean, that's... Uh, he did, actually. You genuinely did, didn't you? Yeah, Ruben. Not Diaz, no, not Diaz. It was Ruben. Yeah. Yeah. His whole name. Change his surname. But, yeah, wonderful. I mean, what more can I say about him? Um, Van Dyke does have those moments. They don't call me Van Disney for no reason, but every now and then... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, Thiago Silva's, you know, he's... he's Due a free bus pass soon, you know, so he's getting he's getting on a little bit. I expected and more from you. Are you, you not know? the same no, age? He's a are you he's and a him not the same age? So, uh, we, we are. Yes. And, <laughs> and I'm not a footballer. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's right. okay. um, no, Thiago Silva is fantastic. Um, he's a great player, but at this point now, if I was choosing one to have him in my squad out of those two, I'd choose Van Dyke's because he's got age on him. And he's and Van Dyke does have that ridiculous ability, even if mm. he isn't quite at the level a few years ago. I think it's still in there somewhere, and I would, I, would, I would take that as a chance to get that back where Thiago Silva is just a bit old now. He's lost maybe a tiny bit of pace, but I still think mentally he's, he's one of the best. Yeah, for balance game. as well, Van Dijk, I would say, out of all of them, came the closest to the Ballon d'Or when he had that elite mm. season a few years back. But you all agree Ruben Diaz uh, is the one you start. So OK, let's, let's take those magnets off and pick up your next three because yeah. we're moving up the pitch steadily, aren't we? We're going to wingers Ooh. next. Now, this isn't left wing or right wing, it's just wingers. So we've got three names available to our guests. Raheem Sterling, Mo Salah and Jack Grealish. Now, some play on the left, some play on the right. All fantastic players. This is a really difficult one, I think. Ooh, Rory, Rory is unsure. struggling. Oh, wow, OK. OK, let's have a look at your boards. I want to see them all placed. Sterling, Salah, Grealish, three, two, one, reveal. Salah, Grealish. Oh, oh, an agreement. The same. An agreement. Why are wow. you so glum? Because I feel like you have purposefully made me fight an uphill battle. <laughs> You've made this very difficult for me. How can I possibly argue anything away from this? I don't want Sterling's to do this. Sterling's had a very good start to the season if you're being, you know, you're being yeah. un what is un worse? unconscious. Yeah, he's a Premier best. League icon, a treble winner. I mean, winner. I know, it's I know. Very... Well, that's why I've done it. It's best that Sterling probably would be 
benched for me there. He said, yeah. Jack I love Jack Grealish, but Sterling hasn't been at his electric best for a while now. But look, I, I, I mean, I've watched him be sold and then we won a treble, so it'd be stupid for me not to put him there, you know. Mm. So interesting, everyone's put Salah there, so I thought you'd maybe, yeah, I well, thought you maybe put yeah. Grealish in well, at the start. Let's be honest, Jack's an excellent player, but Salah, it pays me to say, he's an all time great, you know, in the Premier yeah. League. So the so levels of consistency are absolutely yeah, yeah, incredible. He's yeah. Mm. Yeah. All right. Oh, there we the next go. One. Total, friendly, quite, quite a lot of agreement total there. agreement there. Uh, next one, we're talking goalkeepers. Uh, so get your magnets. Good luck with this one, Rory. Uh, Rory's face there with the picture, <laughs> by the way. We'll come to him in a minute. Sanchez, <laughs> Allison, and Edison. So they're the three that you go. And of course, uh, all of these: Chelsea, Liverpool, and Man City, because they're the guests who the guests support. Uh, let's see how you've. How you pick them? I'm feeling brutal against Chelsea here, but it's just... So am I. <laughs> oh, total agreement again. Again, you put... No, I, I honestly think Alisson's the best keeper in the world, and that's come from a Man City fan. Yeah. I think Edison is like... My, if Edison's a 9 out of 10, he's a 9.5. It's very close, mm. but Alisson... I, I did a, a video on my channel with a, a goalkeeper analyst a long time ago, and it made me realise how good Alisson actually was because he saved him like 15 goals a season. Mm. And once you still saw the pure stats, I was like, I can't deny that. Yeah. And he's the reason that Liverpool probably actually... Did as well as he did last season because like, player of the season. Yeah, he's last ridiculous. Year. And I, th I think Edison is as well. And he got gr he was great in the running for us in the, mm. the treble. But Alisson, he is he's just he's just. Talk to us about Alisson. He's just the yeah. most well-rounded keeper, I think, especially in the transfer market this year when we were talking about what teams needed from goalkeepers. You were talking about good shot stuffers, good with their feet, good distribution. He is literally consistently good across yeah. all those categories. He's not even better at shot stopping than he is at distribution. He can just do it all. And I think he's part of Liverpool's build-up play. I mean, we've literally seen him get assists, the way he feeds Salah in, the way scored he a goal as well. scored a goal. Yeah. Exactly. I just don't think you can argue that he is probably the best goalkeeper in the Premier League I'd agree. Right Robert yeah. Sanchez, what do you think? I'm Sonic. worried, Joe. I'm <laughs> mad, troubled. I'm really worried. You know, I've, I've, we've had a problem with goalkeepers for a long time. Since Thibaut Courtois left us, we have struggled. And Edouard Mendy obviously had that purple patch where we won the Champions League and he had international success. Kepa Riza Balaga had his moments but was always dodgy. But it feels like we've panicked bought. It feels like we've replaced a dodgy goalkeeper with a dodgy goalkeeper. Was he meant to come in as a number two, do you think? Or do you think he was coming in with the idea to start every game? I would love to ask that question to the recruit to the people who are in charge of the recruitment because I, know, I do honestly they? don't mm. understand. I don't think... Uh, Chelsea have gone out and bought Brighton's number two. So I cannot understand the logic in that. And presumably there will be an upgrade. But at the moment, I'm not even sure that he's elevated from Kepa Ruiz Balaga. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Let's keep moving through these because we've got some more great Hopefully debate coming up. Yeah. The next one. I think the next one is pretty yeah. tasty. It's a debate that's mm. been had plenty of times yeah. online. England fans involved as well with this one. The right backs: Reese James, Trent Alexander-Arnold, and Kyle Walker. Three of the Premier League, if not Europe's best fullbacks, really. We really agree. Certainly, a heavy debate going on in the England yeah. squads here. Okay. So let's reveal. Three, two, one, go. If James wasn't injured, he actually would be. Yeah. Like, he would be probably in this all column. Walker. But, okay. yeah. but he is yeah. injured, isn't he, at the moment? So mm. you can't argue with the fact that you wouldn't start him. He's always injured, isn't he? That's the thing. Well, that's the like, thing. He's so he's in and out. Yeah, like, I mean, he has he to be He's such a good player, though. There's no denying that. But, Rory, I Rory's mean, this is controversial. Attempt. Yeah. yeah. I mean, no, I think that's not an attempt. That's a fact. Like, like really, <laughs> there is no doubt that Reese James is a better right back than Trent Alexander Arnold. He might not be a better there is footballer. There's debate over that. I think oh, there, there is a massive debate. I know what you mean as a, as a pure right back. As a right back. I think, I think there's as probably right more back. balance. As a footballer, we can explore it. Maybe as, a, as, a, as an inverted fullback, we could explore it. As a midfielder, even, we could explore it. But as a right back, Reese James is more comparable to Kyle Walker than he is yeah. Trent Alexander Arnold. But that's just how the role has evolved, you don't think? Like, you, can, you can't really compare something to a tr traditional right back when that's just not how. Every team plays it anymore. I think, I, think I think a lot of a lot of people would think that the responsibility of a right back is to be able to defend, and the fact that Trent Alexander Arnold can't is when problematic. you say can't it's defend, it's just not true. Yeah, I stand it's by that exactly. You, you, you think he can't, can't stand defend. by exactly that? Yeah, exactly that. It's a, that's not me be speaking. You in don't hyperbole. win Champions League not being able to defend. I mean, he's one of the most you, decorated you lose players. His league not being able to well, defend. I think Vanda Vanda about that goal when Trent Alexander Arnold didn't know where he was. It's very very tough to defend against Vinicius Junior. You're talking about one of the best players. He didn't know where he was. Unless you're Kyle he Walker. He literally <laughs> didn't know where he was. Yeah, and Kyle Walker didn't struggle. I think like, in one-on-one -on -one situations, sometimes I understand that. But I think generally as a defender, I think his positional wise, I, think, I just I just can't see how people don't understand how good a right back is. Mm. I guess I'd, maybe because I'm watching him week in, week out, and I literally marvel at some of the crosses he makes. I, I do as well. No but one's you, doubting his attacking out, but exactly. I understand that. But I think but, as soon as you start talking about Trent Alexander-Arnold to, to, to demonstrate his brilliance, you'll start talking about the crosses that he puts in. Mm. I'm talking about his defensive qualities that are non-existent. That's just not what he's required to do. In this but, but is that, is it not, is that not how, the, up, uh, yeah. how it's how the game's 
developed and evolved the fact that he can do so much, take free kicks, get assists. But, try, and, you, and you're saying he can't. Saying he can't defend is, is a bit harsh. It's such a, you're it's you're a, saying he can't defend to the level that Reece James. You're such a hipster. It's such a hip. The game has evolved, and you know the, the way that <laughs> Do I fall back that? The way that game. The way that <laughs> I didn't know. Tactical like now, you're it's, a tactical. Still, it's still the case that the fullbacks, <laughs> in whatever modern spin you want to yeah. put on them, are required to have defensive capability and defensive natural now. So Steven, he has neither. It's weird because I have put him there, but I do... If I was to choose a, a Walker replacement, and that sounds quite arrogant, uh, but I, I would, Reece James would be the guy, but he's just not fit. And that's one of those things where it's like, if I, if I wanted him in the squad, like... I'd rather have Trent Alexander-Arnold, who knows he's going to be available, and Pep can do his thing and probably cover his deficiencies. He'd be so good under Pep. That's the thing, isn't <laughs> yeah. it? But I do think he defensively is poor, and I've been obviously blessed to watch the best, in my opinion, the best Premier League right-back ever, the best defensive fullback in the world in Kyle mm-hmm. Walker. So I, I would feel a little bit like, oh... And Kyle Walker this season, him. he's a man possessed, isn't yeah. he? Yeah. He's, he's amazing. He started the just, season yeah. like, like just in incredible ways. So obviously scoring that goal for England as well. Mm. He's, he's sensational. Definitely. First goal for England, yeah. yeah. Uh, right, OK, let's move on to the next one then. We're going to look at the uh, forward positions. Not um, including Haaland here, though, are we? <laughs> no, we, we haven't included Haaland because we think it would be a... Ta- Although, maybe we should have done it's with Rory in the show. Yeah, we're only about himself. What are you saying? Right, Jackson, Nunes and Alvarez. Sorry, so this three is hard comparable with nails. players. Yeah, the magnets are quite tricky. It's when to you've get got long nails, it's, it's difficult. Um, but we're Should we go to Stephen first thing? Because he was very quick with his. Let's have a look at yours. I mean, I think, it, I think it's genuinely pretty logical. I don't mean that in a patronising sense, but he's a World Cup winner. I think yeah. we've got the same. Haven't yeah, we? I think everyone we're has. We're so in agreement. Wow, there's not a lot of debate on this item as we it's thought. Just... It's because you're, you're really not backing your Chelsea players here. Is it, well, I'm, but I'm not, I'm not <laughs> insane. I can't, I, can't, I, can't, I can't put Nicholas Jackson ahead of Julian Alvarez, who just won a World Cup. Have you seen his, his array of honours? Yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's, he's a, he's a, a it's trophy machine. Where does he rank, do you think, in terms of best strikers? We're putting Haaland at the, as the best striker in the league. Is he number six do, do you think he's anyone else in the next best? Does. I think he yeah. does start for any other team, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He does. But Pep's accommodated both of them this season, hasn't he? Yeah, I think he needed him and, to, yeah. Him and against Fulham, the, the reason we won, we didn't play that well, but we won 5-1 because Alvarez and Haaland were just mm. ridiculous. If you're leading a line alongside Haaland and not yeah. looking out of place, I just don't think you can deny that he's the starter. Yeah, and there isn't another team in the Premier League that Julian Alvarez doesn't walk into. Yeah, Harry, can I ask you about Darwin Nunes and the opinion of because obviously we saw we saw him. He, he's sort of there, there's a split opinion. I would say is fair to say on social media, which obviously you have to take with a pinch of salt occasionally. But obviously we see games where he looks unbelievable, and then mm. sometimes his misses are highlights as well. So what is the perception amongst Liverpool fans? Yeah, he's a little bit here miss. I don't think you can deny that. I think he's really tried to prove himself this season that he's worked hard on the defensive side of his game because Klopp has publicly said to get into this team as a forward you need to have the pressing spot on, and he, he just didn't have that last year, so he wasn't getting the minutes. And he is a player that definitely needs minutes to build that consistency. But I think already this season, you're starting to see how he's gelled. He's learned a bit of English as well, which I think will help him. And as a sub, there's just no one else you want to come on because he causes yeah. that bit of chaos. He's yeah. unpredictable. He's physical. He's tall. He's so speedy as well. You saw it against Newcastle. He comes on. He's Great got the ability to change a game. And, yeah. and you hope that he can do more of that so you can have more examples of that. But inside the club internally, such a popular player. Like, no other player takes a throw in and gets gets such a cheer that he does. It's absolutely <laughs> patronising, well, isn't it? Well done, Darwin. It's, it's actually... I've started doing with Endo a bit because he's a new player, but yeah. Nunes, he literally, like, will make a good touch to the ball and everyone will be shouting yeah. his name at Anfield. It, it's crazy. But, yeah, really popular player. And I think he's going to pay back the, the dividends. Clinical against Newcastle. What have you made of Jackson? Yeah. I, I like him. I like how lively he is. Obviously, the, the miss against Nottingham Forest is what's going to be highlighted. Mm. People were very aware of that. And it was a, a, a very wasteful moment for him but I like the way that he plays I like the link-up play that we saw in pre-season and it's just refreshing to have a striker who is who is so happy to you know run the channels press from the front I think he will come good but we're going to just have to be patient all right let's go to the next one then uh, this mm. is kind of creators almost attacking yeah. midfielders there's a bit of a variety in terms yeah. of their positions but we've got Nkunku, Sabotslai and Phil Foden yeah. so you know they are kind of creative they can Quite play versatile. a little bit wide versatile yeah. attackers aren't they Sabotslai playing a little bit more in the midfield this season obviously there's been a debate over Phil Foden's best position and Nkunku has arrived yeah. injured but it's sensational Still waiting on Roy, but we can see Stephen and Harriet's boards. I'm gonna get um, I'm gonna get told off for this. I know Ooh, that. Boy, oh, here we go. go. When I was sent this, when I was sent this, the category was in midfielders. Okay. Yeah. So if this was, if this was a winger, this would look different. But I just okay. think with there being <laughs> still <laughs> well, <laughs> there is still a little bit of controversy over his best position, whether he is the best in midfield. So currently, okay, currently he would be the okay. starter. But I think if you're asking this in a few weeks or in a, even a few months, he is my early shout for Liverpool's player of the season. He has been. Ooh, wow. 
phenomenal. Wow. I think he has changed Liverpool's midfield. He has changed the game. And particularly when Liverpool have gone down to 10 men twice this season, standout player every single time. So right now, I'm putting him in bench, but I think genuinely by the end, oh, he's, he, he's going to be so there. You think in midfield, I'm not saying right. at the moment he's, okay. he's more proven yeah. than Foden, better than Foden, but in the midfield yeah. area, this is currently what I would do. Wow. Um, Phil is probably... He's, he's Kevin De Bruyne's successor. He's, he's that level of good, and he's starting. He's not season. trusted to be that. At but the he, moment. He, this season, he has actually been playing in midfield. Though, that's the thing is, he's been playing central, and he's been absolutely phenomenal. Um, against Newcastle, he, I think he created like a Premier League, like his personal record of chances created seven against Newcastle. He was absolutely phenomenal, um, and he stepped up a little bit this year because I think he sensed that with De Bruyne out for a while, he's going to be the guy that's going to lean on. He's, he's been sort of normally starting on the right, but just playing central because Kyle Walker's been up on the right wing instead, and yeah. so he's been playing central. And I think Phil Foden. It's weird because he's been around for so long, but he's only 23. You know, I think yeah. we forget yeah, how young crazy. he is, and he's. I think he's, you know, finally like ready to show that not that he's just an excellent player, but he can be. You know, we're talking about a generational level. So yeah, I, I think we can all agree. Already. Technically, he's one of the best players <laughs> in the league, and we, yeah. we've done so many interviews where we've talked about best players you've played with in the English one. Everyone says Phil Foden technically is amazing. With that said, are you surprised he hasn't had more minutes for Man City and England with regards to starts? Because a lot of they, they, they highlighted that off the back of the England game. Actually, a lot for of England, I don't really care. Appearances come off Southgate the bench. Can do what he wants that way. But for City, he does play <laughs> often. But I think we're forgetting that we're talking about like playing amongst some of the greatest to ever play in the Premier League midfielders. Mm. He's been competing against Ilkay Gundogan. David Silva, yeah. Kevin De Bruyne, Yaya Torre was there when he was coming through. Still, like it's Bernardo Silva. It's just you can talk about him minutes, and all the Arsenal fans like he doesn't play that much. He's, Saka's been up against no one, you know. He's been against no one. Where Foden's been learning from the, some of the best to ever do it. Like, I'm talking the highest level. So Phil Foden, he's he's won so much already. He's done so many wonderful things, and he's just getting started. Okay, uh-huh. and you totally agree. So... Yeah, I don't like saying it too often, but I completely agree with Steve. I think <laughs> Phil Foden, Phil Foden's a dazzling player. Yeah. Like truly, yeah. truly, like mind-blowingly good and I think that he will he will now take on the mantle with De Bruyne out um, I think that this could easily be in Kunku it's just he's arrived injured so yeah, unfortunately yeah, you know, missed, yeah, the, missed the World Cup didn't he with the same injury mm. OK last one we're going to talk it doesn't quite work in terms of start bench cell because no, they're players but, <laughs> so this is one, two, three. yeah yeah one two three but oh, we think it's a very horrible. good one with managers uh, Poch Klopp and Guardiola three top gaffers as we know uh, but where are you placing them what's well, a half thing going on you're going to make again. you're going to make me do this and I'm just not going to do it I'm just going to go like oh, no, 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 get on the fence oh, so get on the fence. fence this is so on the you fence you have to can't be on the fence like, for this I just one. Think that, that, that means pet, really, but you won't admit it. That's what it means. <laughs> well, I, I think, think we know. Uh, what you got? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the greatest. Um, yeah. The, the only thing, I would like to caveat this by saying that as much as I think Pep Guardiola is the best, I think if you were to have a conversation around kind of pound for pound, to borrow a boxing mm. phrase, just, just, just to explore what Jurgen Klopp has done with less, yeah. I think you could argue that it's more. And so what over... he's achieved is harder, you think, than what I, I, th- I think that the fact that Jurgen Klopp has managed to achieve what he's achieved without the constant supply of the greatest in every single position all the time, I think you could argue that that is perhaps a greater achievement. But in terms of just looking at it factually, it's Guardiola, isn't it? I mean, he's had the money to spend, but he's done so <laughs> well of it. It's one of those things where you can't deny. He's like, yeah, he's had the money to spend, but we only have to look at Chelsea in the past year to see him spend a billion or United or whatever to realise that's no guarantee of trophies and pound for pound for what he's got trophy for pounds it's just ridiculous trophy for pound new one uh, yeah, we can't come to you because you haven't reached the I, know. <laughs> I feel really stupid doing this but I just I just think both of these managers have completely transformed okay. the Premier League they've brought their ideologies they've tr- they've changed how other teams yeah. approach football I, I, you can't really argue Guardiola has literally just won a treble so he probably at the moment would be there we go we've got the yeah. okay, so that, that, I love it. <laughs> that concludes uh, that concludes it. No, Harry gonna, has I'm just gonna... moved her magnet yeah. just to it's confirm. It's just off the board. It's, it's just not board. put on the board. <laughs>